right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Crossing Swords. And as always, I'm Andrew. And I'm just about prepared to talk you through some of the hottest talking points in our lives over the last week. Yeah, I mean, if I feel I was thinking about this beforehand. I almost feel like I'm a real broadcaster about to go on the news. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so much shit flying around. I feel like I'm in the thick of it, Jake. There's a lot of, I mean, I've <laughs> seen the photos and there's a lot of thick stuff going on around you. And you know me, No Jake. doubt. I like my things, like I like my shakes. Thick. Thick. <laughs> yep. And that's milkshakes, that's my Arab shakes. Do you know what I mean? I like them All thick. your shakes. Yeah, no, I like it. You, yeah. Your, your Zumba shakes. And coincidentally, my milkshake brings all the shakes to the yard. Well, I've read that. Yeah. I've read that you're giving out uh, the next FIFA World Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, yeah. Shaking it into submission. Shake it up. Yeah. Shake them off. It's going to be shaking. It. We're going to be shaking. My partner in crime will be shaking Stevens. Oh, do you know what I was going to mention her, but then I thought no, because you know what, it's not worth, it's not worth potentially insulting her just to get you to play I that one clip. I can't talk about it because um, it might go away. Do you know what I mean? But there's been rumours that there might be a new version of something coming out this Christmas. Really? Yeah. Really. Just think of the word shaking. And you'll know what I mean. I know I'm there, but I can't tell you. You know. And it might not happen, so don't get too excited. But yeah, no. But when are we? When are we in the recording studio for that? The thing that may or may not happen. <laughs> well, we got to wait for um, Mister Shaking. I'm going to call him Mister Shaking. That's what he goes by. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere he goes, his neighbours are like, "It's Mister Shaking." It's going to be really unfortunate if you get Parkinson's, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. You're going to be like, "There goes old shaking shit." Surely you'd have to stop calling him. That's it. It'd just be insulting. You'd just be. It's now mocking him. You go, oh, there goes old shaking. And they're like, oh, what? The bloke from this? Like, I've no idea what you're talking about, mate. No idea if he was a pop star, but he just shakes a lot. There he goes. Old old shaking. He was famous famous (laughs) for it then. He's famous for it now. Never change. Him and Michael J. Fox. I'll be honest. I did not have Shaking Stevens on my Crossing Swords intro bingo card. (laughs) No, neither did I. No, but yeah, we're waiting on uh, Mr. Shaking at the moment, so just keep your ear to the ground. Yep, and uh, you know, I might get some some shaken fries. I'll oh, shake a martini. <laughs> Tried a martini once. Yeah. Not my thing. No. Not my thing. What's, that, what's actually in a martini? From what I could tell, from my <laughs> taste buds. <laughs> Not anything good. Pure alcohol. Right, okay. Um, nothing else. Very strong, very dry. Isn't that the case though, I don't think they had anything like a mixer. Do all, they? all I know is, <laughs> it's not for me, yeah. and I went straight back to beer. Did he shake it or did he stir it? Because that might have been where it went wrong. Didn't look. That was the problem. Uh, Maybe that was the problem. I think that's where you fell down. I just thought, if you notice, James Bond always specifies shake and not stir. I just he doesn't ever just say. The guy looked quite, um, not like really nervous, but he looked a bit nervous, and I thought, I don't want to make it worse by staring at him the whole time. <laughs> so I just don't get on with it. Let me no, do well, it. I understand that because you slightly stared at me as you said it. And actually, I felt quite You intimidated. felt the pressure, didn't you? Yeah. You felt the pressure. I suddenly went, suddenly your broadcasting skills yeah. came under fire. No, yeah. I, I, I'm normally used to. I have a room. very intimidating stare. Normally, you look like just a nice little Ewok. Do you know what I mean? Just friendly, normally I am. cuddly. Normally, I am. But suddenly, you just turn there. Sometimes the rocks come out. I reckon Sometimes you Sometimes the bows and arrows. I thought about it. Yeah. I've, been, I've had offers. I think you're destined. I've had offered every other week. <laughs> Martin Scorsese is calling me up. I'm like, listen, bro, but it's not for me. You're all about the charity. I'm all about the charity. I'm all yeah. about, you know, they, they gave like, up all of they're that. They're like, we'll pay you money. And I was like, no, give it to the charity. And they're like, no, <laughs> we don't want to give charity money. We want to give you the money. And I just, I said, no, I can't do that. <laughs> you could have just handed the money to charity yourself. Please. <laughs> Please. I've got a reputation to uphold. Yeah, you don't want to be seen as being too over the top. Because then people will take pictures of me and they'll think, oh, he's just doing it for the pictures. He's yeah, just yeah, doing yeah. it for the, you know. For the cameras. I, I don't want any of that publicity. You don't want to be known as doing it for the gram. I don't want to be known as do- I do a lot of things for the gram. Um, want, I suck drug charity. dealers. <laughs> I. <laughs> <laughs> You're investing early in the future uh, opportunities and green products. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Although maybe not, maybe not, not with uh, what our current Home Secretary wants to do. Yeah, but I'm going to move to America. Biden's just, that's well, true. Biden's just said it's all the cool. Is it's funny because traditionally you're the one who, you, like, I thought you might be more on Suella Braverman's side. I mean, not a, not even a little bit. No. I think we should decriminalise drugs. Oh yeah, fair enough. 
we're on the same page no, then. I do. I think it doesn't actually criminalising doesn't actually solve anything. No, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't solve anything at all. It just makes it worse. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. We've so we've got a, a just a, a sprinkling of topics to discuss today. Yeah, I think we'll probably start with politics because that's like sure. the most pressing thing. Sure. Going on I've got moment. one thing political. Um, I, but, I have but like kick a couple of things. My kick f- it off. The first question was just going to be. Do you think uh, Liz Truss makes the next general election? Uh, bro, she might not last to the end of this pod. I mean, we start <laughs> recording, <laughs> and by the time we finish, it could change. So I deliberately kind of didn't pick anything too yeah, political, because, yeah. like, the thing is, when there's nice stability, things just chug along. Yeah. Not much changes, little bits here and there. But they're planned. Bit, yeah. They're planned ahead, and there's not there's too much going on. With this <laughs> shit show that's going on right now, <laughs> like... Every time I put my phone down to go for a piss and I come back and everything's changed, it's that quick. Yeah. It's horrific. I mean, and I we're know, paying the price. I know we've said it before, but it is hard, even though we're currently living through it, to imagine it could get worse from Boris Johnson. It's also... Because like, genuinely, I wasn't excited by anyone who um, was vying to replace him. None of them seemed like particularly good options. They weren't any, yeah. Um, and so I wasn't excited anyway, but... I. I didn't expect it to get to the point where it feels like the Conservatives are close to losing all credibility. Do you know what I mean? Because if even if they do get rid of trust, it's then how can you claim you could provide a stable government? You haven't done that for the last 12 years. No, and we, we actually featured in a small part as part of the um, as part of a, a recent Liz Trust speech at her party <laughs> conference. Did we? I we, did. Are, we are a member of the Anti-Growth Coalition do here you know at Crossing Swords. It seems like it's quite a quite wide net, to be fair. Is it, most people are in it. Us, most yeah. people are in it. It's kind of... Yeah. Basically, if you're anti-Liz Truss in any way, you're part of the anti... Like, literally, Liz, Liz Truss is, is not what, in it. what did she specify? Um, that's it. What, what if we come under specifically for her? I would imagine independent broadcast. Yeah. That's, that's kind of our... She has actually told podcast. us podcast Podcasts. No, she, she said podcasts are part of the Anti-Growth Coalition, so we are mm. part of the Anti-Growth Coalition now. Do you know what? Quite proud. I'm quite happy with it, yeah. yeah. I kind of like it. I'm all right with that. <laughs> I've never been part of a club so big. No, and to be honest with you, if being part of the Anti-Growth Coalition, and this is the funny thing, isn't it? Because what that is, is to put there like an enemy, isn't it? And you're like, well, I don't want to be a member of this. I'm not anti-anything. I'm just you know, it's doing my thing. <coughs> Do you know what I mean? It's, it's For me, I always, when you, when you pick sides, I'm always quite happy. If you look along who's on your team yeah. and you look at the other side and you see who's against you, yeah. it's a few indicators. If I look along my team and everyone's in it yeah. and I look across, I because I think, oh, I don't know, that's maybe I've been duped here. Yeah. And then I look across and I see just Liz Trust standing on her own wanking off Kwasi Kwarteng and I think, <laughs> do you know what? I've made the right call. Do you it's know, a it's good funny. side to pick. We've sort of had this conversation before, like when, when it comes to football, that we've all got, we've got a mutual friend that if we suddenly found he was on our side in an argument about football, we suddenly re-evaluated yeah. your position. because you, you, like, well, you think about it. Because we had no respect for his football opinions. It was like, if he agreed with you, you meant, well, there must be something wrong with yeah, the argument. Like, oh, I'm am it. I wrong? I might not yeah, see it. Like, <laughs> but he's not seeing what I'm putting out there. So I'm... <laughs> no, yeah, I wrote a couple of, couple of nights out. I mean, we're going way back. And he'd, he'd, you'd say something and he'd be like, yeah, absolutely, yeah. mate. And he'd go off on it and you'd be like... Looking back, am, he I, was, he, you, am I wrong? Was he the Boris of our group? Like thing. it was sort of just he was the loudest and just sort of. Yeah, but his opinions were bad. Like you said, he's a. Yeah, so Boris you, is. You he was did. calling people letterboxes. You d- yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and I think I think There's, this guy was. He's a bit only had as well. one of his children are like legitimately conceived. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> the guy's Boris not a honest man. <laughs> Technically both. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. It's just Boris. Just Boris. The one you I'm don't talking about doesn't have listen, a legitimate you job. You don't want to. Not, not that I buy into that bullshit. You don't want to wander into libelous, slanderous territory. No, no, no. Quite. Stick with Boris. Yeah. <laughs> also, I, I like the person we're talking about, despite their poor football opinions most so of the I. time. So do I. Yeah. Um, I've got, I've got a question. Um. Who were D12? How'd they get started? <laughs> How about this? Are you... Yeah. yeah. Smart. I thought you were going to go for it then, and you didn't. No. And I'm pleased you didn't. Uh, even I know you don't go full. No. Think no. about it. Never go full. Raymond. 
Is it even? Don't, yes. You can't do that impression technically, really, can you? Well, Rob Downey Jr. Oh yeah, probably not. <laughs> no. <'cause> <laughs> I just automatically did yeah, it. No, no, absolutely, absolutely. But no, no. Technically, you can't even do the impression. Yeah, smart shit. Can't wear toothpicks. I loved uh, Robert Downey Jr. was talking to Joe Rogan about it. Like, he went on there for like an hour and a half, and he doesn't do those sort of interviews normally. And they were talking about Tropic Thunder, and Joe was like, "Could you do that nowadays?" And he was like. You could do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wouldn't go well. <laughs> um, should Sturgeon have said and stood by the fact that when she said that she detests Tories and everything they stand for? Do I think she should stand by that? She already has. She's come out. She said it. She stood by it. Fucking do think. right. She should. <laughs> Absolutely. No, like the only th- reason I ask is because obviously the likes of David Amos killed a couple of years ago. Yeah. Um. No, but that's not what that is. That, that no, she's and this not coming ins- from she's not inciting violence. And she's by not the way, saying we should tear them down and destroy. This coming them. from the party that said um, that called immigrants, alien culture, trade unionists, unions, the unionists, the enemy within, gay men, tanked up bum boys. Um, lots of comment about black men and women, uh, Muslim women in burkas too. Admittedly, most of those are Boris Johnson, but let's be honest, <laughs> he has the biggest catalogue, and yeah, they elected him leader. Yeah, I mean, the problem with um, what you were saying before is that, like, also just, just people trying to use the Joe Cox situation, because that was a horrific event and that should never happen. But, like, if people are in this situation, in terms of we're talking about the Tories in general, if people were pushed to violence at the moment because of the Tories, it would be because of the Tories, not because Nicola Sturgeon said, fuck the Tories. No, and there's just, loads of public and figures also, out there doing it, just, it. it. It makes me laugh that they say Remainers are citizens of nowhere and that we're stoking up this divisive and I say this is a Remainer, stoking up this we're divisive rhetoric and yet like just before or just after, around the same sort of time that Nicola Sturgeon said she mm. detested him, Suella Braverman at the Brighton Conference said that it was her dream, her dream and, her, and her, obsession. her obsession to see a newspaper headline with a plane taking off to Rwanda yeah. and yet we're the ones with divisive language. We're the ones that aren't respecting other human beings. No, there's a brilliant, like, it's not brilliant, but it's like, it's all, it is to a humorous level of incredulity. We've got to, with like the hypocrisy of the current, like Tory administration, that they like disavow things they've been doing for the last 12 years and throw it at the Labour party saying, this is what you're going to get from them. It's like, well, we've just had it from you for 12 years. So why would we listen to you? But they feel happy to go out, and spread that message and it's just like i don't as i said to you in the last time i don't understand what it achieves what they're getting from it because they have no credibility in any walk of life after this none of them could have a public face after this and yet they will will they though i think so I i don't think the current i don't think like this current administration i don't see liz truss being a public like she she'll get speeches and shit afterwards because she's been prime minister but in terms of like an actual continuing to be a household name that won't happen Kwasi Kwarteng won't like still be in the public eye once he steps away from it do you know what I mean like it's not someone like Boris yeah all right maybe but the rest of them I don't think enough of them have enough do of you a think profile. we've seen the collapse of the conservative party I think so because like, I d- unless Liz Truss stops backing down from shit going forward and manages not to continue to fuck things up it's only going to continue to get worse. But if the Conservatives get rid of her and put someone else in, the damage that does to their reputation is just as harmful. And I don't know which one's worse, and I think that's... Well, it, obviously she's kind of trying to stoke and the, the Margaret Thatcher thing. Margaret Thatcher famously um, once was really up against it. All of her MPs were not liking her policy. It's all a bit of her like things. And she came out and she gave her speech, you know, that this lady is not for turning speech. And she essentially said her whole thing during that whole period was, I'm not popular. She was like yeah. the Millwall. She was like, no one likes me, I don't care. You know, she's like, no, I'm not popular. Yeah. These are not popular decisions. But I make hard decisions. Mm. And I am a leader. And I think this just wants to do that, but she's not a leader. Yeah, but the thing is, she's walked in immediately doing the wrong thing and not reading the room properly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what the Conservatives needed at that point was for someone to come in and do some popular shit, turn around the opinions, and then continue to slowly take away resources. Not. It sounds mental, but the Conservatives... She's done so badly that the Conservatives would have even benefited if someone came in and did nothing. And there'd have been yeah, heavy yeah, yeah. criticism of that. 
because it's a really tough time at the yeah, moment yeah. and but they'd have been heavily criticised. But it actually wouldn't have been as bad as it is no. now. Which is, a, that's a weird thing to wish for in a way, isn't it? But the thing is, I feel in a really weird place at the moment where I'm not enjoying what's happening because no. of the ultimate consequences. Because we're paying the price for it, yeah. But there's a part of me that's happy because I'm hoping, like, if it does lead to a Labour government, which it would be hard to imagine it doesn't at this point. Yeah. Uh, like something miraculous would have to happen for the Conservatives to turn it around. And we're still a long way out. Like, it's, we've still got a good nearly two years. Do you think we? it'll be two years to the next general election? Well, no, I don't. I, fi- I think the Conservatives won't get rid of Liz Truss, like, outwardly and replace her. They'll call a general election, she loses, and then they can rebuild from there. Well, I've heard, I've, there are rumours that a number of backbench Tory MPs are saying that they'd rather lose their seat Mm. calling a general election now, knowing they'll lose their seat, yeah. and try and save the party in the long run, yeah. than continue with what's happening. Yeah. And that's not an, that's not an isolated report. There's, there's a few, allegedly, yeah. that are saying similar expressions. And the thing is, it doesn't feel like there's a path back for trust at this point. Like it feels like it's already gone too far. for them to, to be a, a less than two months into your premiership and have these things already there, it's... It's like it would take something miraculous for her to turn it around. She may as well. She may as well go out on a high. She may as well, you know, attend some award show, twat Ant and Deck, <laughs> shit in the desk on the way out. Really have a good party up. Yeah, yeah. And just if you're going to leave, leave big. Yeah. Because like you said, there's no way back for her. There is no way back. No, for her. it's so for me. It's just basically how quickly she realises the best, that. The best week that we <laughs> had under trust. Knows? Do you think like she's aware of the fact it's irredeemable at this point? No, I think I think she kind of sees this as her Thatcher moment. I think she sees this as being you think quite she genuinely the world like, against I'm me. And the Mourinho mentality of... I've got it. And also she's dogs. like, you know, I was voted in. These people want me. And it's like... You were sort of voted in. Yeah. <laughs> More people voted for Count Binface in the general election. Yeah, uh, or mayoral election, whichever yeah, one it is. Yeah. But you think? I think she sort of sees it as I don't know. Maybe she does. Look, she's very, s- she's very smart in terms of there is something there. Look, there is an intelligence there. Is there? But in a lot of aspects, I don't know if I agree. It's not. There's no. There's no real common sense. There's no. The only thing I would say she did that was intelligent is from some of the political commentary I've been listening to, the message she was putting across of the sort of things she would want to do, but she never said if anything specific. Like would eventually lead down to the things she has done, but not like as soon as you step in. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's where she made the mistake. And I think, but obviously, there's no, there's no awareness. Yeah. There's no my, and one of the one of the best things I think, and I'm I'm fairly certain you'll have seen it because I've seen it in a few different sources, and I'm fairly certain you'll have seen it in at least one on at least one of them. The whole thing of the the historian that she claims to be this huge fan of. Um, no, every heard. time she's on interviews and stuff like his books on the background and okay. all this and stuff and she's like you know he's a kind of political economical historian and yeah, yeah, yeah. she's like puts he's across that she's brilliant. intelligent she, and, and he loves her and whatever and then he was asked recently about what he thinks about the fact that Liz Truss is such a fan of his work and his big, and he said basically and I'm not putting words in his mouth because I'm not quoting him directly but he said she's an idiot she clearly hasn't understood any of what I no. wrote about if she actually understood or any of the books even a little bit that she claims to have read and enjoyed mm. she wouldn't be making the policy she does she wouldn't be well, trying she to she wouldn't be trying to any s- of his stuff, she, she was like she would she wouldn't be trying to get growth from tax cuts no if she'd read my books that's not no. you know and I thought that was just quite a telling sign of yeah the thing is, it does make you wonder how they get to make these decisions. Like, So when they all got in the office for the first time, it's like, right, so we need to do something fiscally to turn this around and get bit, get people on side. You know, people have really had to sacrifice. Times are getting tough. Bills are going up. It's getting really, really bad out there. The poor are squeezed more than they've ever been squeezed before. What can we do for them? And so who popped up? Like someone Quasi somewhere popped up and went. had the idea of, we make rich people pay less. Well, uh, absolutely. And I just some, like some hedge fund managers and bankers went, there's money to be made in this. <laughs> and they got old Quasi on the line and they went, listen, son, come here. We mentioned it in the last episode, the fact that he was having meetings with them yeah, yeah. in the build-up to it. He went, listen, son, 
Yeah, I mean, we have to be careful. Before you, can't you just imply. before you before you tank the economy, right? I just want to say what Jake's saying. What's, isn't, what's going to happen is we're only going to be able to make so much. You got to lift the bonus. You got to lift the bonus uh, bonuses on bankers. Yeah, yeah, and, and then if we could just tax. and if we could just pay a little bit less tax, that'd be great. Do that, then tank the economy. Then we'll rake it in. Yeah. Happy and days. I've had a go. word with the bankers, and they've all said they're going to spend more money. Yeah. Oh, they're just going to put gonna it back put it in so heavily. Yeah, yeah. And they're going to be like, which we're going to invest. Which so part hard. of the economy are you going to invest in? <laughs> all of it, all of the middle bit. Oh, the middle bit, it, it, mate. The just middle bits are really good bit to invest in. I'll probably put some there. You'll it's never just a good. We'll invest in you so hard. We'll yeah, barely have just, any more investments for a week. You no, know, all I will invest all over the economy. Yeah, yeah. All Everywhere. up in it. I'm going to be all up in that grill. I want to be in your children. Now, now, stop asking questions and go and do it. Yeah, just. Yeah, I think that's who that's who came up with that policy. What the bankers? The bankers. I mean, the even, thing is though, even the CEO of Shell like, was like, "Do you think anyone then in the room when the idea comes in went, what? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like when, like guys, I mean, you could do that, but people are going to think, like, why are we giving rich people more money? I like, think, do you think anyone in the room mentioned that? I think the PR team are just. A load of drunks. <laughs> You'd have to be to carry on. Or are they inside agents? What label? Like Just left, doing lefty a agents. Really bad job, but make it look like we're doing a good job. Do you know what I mean? Just Liz, trust me. Like I'm going to go and do some interviews, and all of like, I don't know what happened. The, all, the, all, the, all the all the <laughs> fucking cabinet are all like, no. For the love of God, do not go and open your mouth. And our advisor's like, I think you should. Yeah. I think I'll Talk book about you port several. Markets. Yeah. yeah I, I'll book you all of them. Yeah. Will they ask me tough questions? No, you'll be all right. Should I learn some facts? No, <laughs> go on. You'll be fine. What am I going to talk about while I'm on there? I'll be in Beijing, opening up new pork markets. And the thing is, in six months' time, that could be our job just going around with a little ribbon cutter. That is a disgrace. I, I know, is. because that I wouldn't I wouldn't trust her with scissors. No. But... <laughs> And she's that's gonna not be befitting an XPM, but that's all we can trust. She's gonna be with. trusted with scissors, <laughs> safety ones. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, politics covered. I yeah. think unless there's anything else you wanted to cover. I mean, the only other thing I was going to talk about. Did you see the BBC have found Lineker broke impartiality, impartiality rules? Yeah, I'm not sure what the incident was though. He basically tweeted about. Um, Oh, Russian donations, basically, like a tweet sort of saying, so you have an issue with this, but not with taking money from them to win elections. Um, and the BBC have basically said they found him guilty of breaching impartiality. It breaches their, like, code of conduct for their presenters and stuff like that. Fine. I mean, I don't know what to say. I don't think... I think Gary Lineker is very left-wing. Well, it, it more, no I doubt. wanted to use that to lead into a different question, really, which was what do you think of this weird attempt to make like the BBC have been forced to be impartial to a level where they've got impartiality wrong. Yes. In my opinion, they've given credit to people who shouldn't be receiving credit just to have someone else of the other side in the conversation. What they're doing is, but yet they're still coming under fire for impartiality. There are some things that are just facts, for example. Yes. And what they'll do is they'll get on. It'll be like, look, for those of us watching on on YouTube, okay, I don't, you know, this this tablecloth yeah. sitting in front of us is red. And what they'll do is, is what they'll do <laughs> is they'll get someone on who goes, yeah, that's red. But then for balance and impartiality, they'll get someone on who it thinks it's, it's green. blue or green, yeah. and you think, but that's utterly ludicrous. You don't need to give this person a platform no. because that thing is not up for debate. That is not an, no. That's just that is a fact. Yeah, and I think. They, I think they go wrong in that direction and then they yeah. give a platform to people who but encourage people to go against science. Yeah, because one of my follow-up questions was why are we in a world where telling the truth is somehow impartial? Like, Do you know what I mean? Like, Someone just stating a fact that, like, Gary Lineker, for example, stating the fact that the Tories have a lot of Russian money is a fact. Yeah. But it's somehow impartial. It's a provable fact. So ba- basically what they're saying is to tell the truth about the current establishment is to be impartial. If it's something they don't want or to be Or it's not to impartial. Know. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but it's just ridiculous. In fact, they've got. Like I said, I appreciate. I I think the BBC's impartiality rule or or ideal is the right one. Yeah, but I think they have. I think they get it wrong consistently. Yeah, no, I agree. Excellent. What's your next? Um, well, I, I mean, this is sort of a, a semi decent segue into okay. a talking point that I've got. Um, so you know, we've we've talked a few times on the pod about J.K. Rowling. Yes. Are you aware of the recent stuff that's been going on with her? No. <laughs> okay, so there's. Just What's to give you some, to so I'm just going to give you now? some. I'm just going to give you some context. Go with me. Okay. John Cleese, yeah, has he's just signed for that news show GBB GBBs GBBs or whatever they call it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, GBBs. Yeah, GB News. That's what we'll go with. Yeah, GBBs, and he was on the BBC just promoting <clears> it, <throat> and he was saying how basically the BBC would, you know, would cancel him. He's being cancelled. He's being yeah, the silence and the BBC would never support him, kind of thing. It's like, okay, but you're doing that on the BBC. Like, you do realise the <laughs> how stupid this all sounds. And then, uh, uh, basically, like, I presume his show will just be an hour of him sitting around telling us why it's how shit the world is, how shit the world is, and how it's such a, a shame that you can no longer call people of colour derisory names anymore. <laughs> I don't, you know, I I'm don't getting know. the sense you don't like John Cleese, Jake. It's so sad because he's <laughs> become everything Python mocked. Like yeah. when Python burst onto the scene and they were so mocking of all that mm. kind of non progressive, the class system, all that kind of stuff. And then he's just slotted into it and become yeah, part I think, of it. I think he's definitely bought into the like <coughs> because he was part of a generational like moment of comedians and comedic work and i think he's very much bought into yes i am that amazing so i sh- whatever i think can't be that bad yeah um anyway that context out of the way um at an event uh graham norton was asked about it what about john Cleese? about the john Cleese thing and he he and i if you've never seen it i've i've um we'll we'll try and if we remember to share it on our um Crossing Swords at uh, at Swords Crossing Twitter page. Yeah, um, it's a brilliant. It's three three and a half minutes long. It's an excellent little snippet of interview. By the way, mm. I'm going to break it down for you now. He came out and he said that, uh, th- about John Cleese, yeah. and I think he, he, he summed Norton, it up. Yeah. yeah, I think he summed it up brilliantly for me. He laughed and he said, "Cancel." Mm. And I'm not quoting verbatim. He said, "Cancel culture." He said, "It's not. It's not really the right word, cancel, is it? Because he says, I'm, I'm constantly reading about all these people that have been cancelled and I'm reading it in their mainstream newspaper article. Yeah. And so they're not really ever cancelled, are they? He said, it's consequences. He says, and then he, he sort of stops and mm. said, it must be hard, and this is very specifically about John Cleese, he said, it must be hard for a man of a certain age to suddenly find that the things he used to say now come with consequences. Mm. And that's it. That's kind of all he said. And I just thought it was... Um, brilliantly a, a very short but brilliant explanation of council culture for me yeah because uh, yeah it's an interesting way to look at it because basically what that is a realization of is basically we as a society in the past we didn't hold ourselves to enough of an account or each other to enough of an account for things like that to be pulled up on like now if you were in an office and a manager slapped his secretary's ass, that would not be okay. No. It shouldn't have been okay when it was but okay. But you do hear a lot of people saying um, they've been cultured, uh, cancelled on their own TV shows or in their, yeah, you know. But then saying that, I think there's not. people that have been cancelled that haven't come back and those are normally the ones that shouldn't, if you know what I mean. Like they're ones that have done really genuinely horrific shit. And then I think there's the people who have been cancelled for making mistakes. But since... Uh, it's turned where people can come back from it now. Like, like I think Logan Paul was one of the big, fir- the big first like cancels and then returns coming back after doing the suicide forest video. And since then he's come back and he's bigger than he was yeah. before he got canceled. So I, d- I don't think canceling exists in the same way. I think it can canceling more now is being silenced by social media. I would have thought. Yeah, and like I said, I just, I'm, I'm in the same boat as Graham on that front. I find it laughable that I, there are loads of people, I think I've said it on an episode of the pod way, way back, where I said there's loads of people that I'd never heard of mm. until I heard about them doing the media rounds telling me how they've been cancelled. And it's like, I assure you, if I've now <laughs> suddenly heard of you out of nowhere on big yeah. mainstream news channels and stuff, 
you've not been cancelled. That's yeah, not the right I th- word. I think also cancelled isn't just in terms of like whether you're being silenced. Like cancelled can be like you've lost your livelihood because of your mistakes. But it's not the right word. I think is my. No, I'm no, with no, him. I think, that's I'm with him. I think yeah, that's. Um, I think it was just the word that became. But the interviewer then used that whole thing of um, consequences and mm. celebrities by jumping off and asking him about J.K. Rowling and about the whole okay. trans stuff. And Graham Norton, again, excellent, excellent, excellent answer. He said, listen, he said, my, he said, I'm, I'm kind of, it's getting a bit silly now by amplifying voices of celebrities. He said, my opinion on this doesn't matter. He said, if you want to mm. know about trans issues, go and speak to trans people, go and speak to the parents of trans people mm. and go and speak to, um, and he, then he mentioned Michael Gove and he said, do you remember when Michael Gove a few years ago said, right, we've had enough of experts. He said, no, let's get more experts. He said, let's mm. listen to the doctors and the psychologists and the biologists. He said, let's get them on and talk to them. He's like, don't ask me. Yeah, yeah. Which I think was a brilliant answer. No, it is. I, I mean, I don't necessarily, the only thing I disagree with on, and it's not even really disagreeing because I understand what he was saying, but like him reaffirming his support for trans or like saying like I support trans do you know what I mean he doesn't need to but do you know what I mean like that would be the only bit I'd add to that yeah but but it, it was just a brilliant thing of like yeah. let me ask you about this question going don't don't ask me mm. ask them don't talk about them talk to them yeah you know that was the kind of sentiment now I'm going to summarise what happened next mm. you'll think it's an absolute exaggeration it's all up to you the listener to make your mind up but I've got the tweets I'll mm. read them out so I'll give you a summary you'll go that seems a bit Wild. Then I'll read the tweets and you tell me if I was exaggerating. Billy Bragg, I don't know if you know Billy Bragg. No. I don't I don't suspect many people listening will. Billy Bragg, singer songwriter, um, very left wing. Okay. And like most artists, he expressed his political uh, through feelings his through medium. his art. So yeah. that he does he has a lot of very he, uh, political heavy songs. Okay. And a lot of the songs, even if they're about, you know, all various manner so of like things, really sort of thing. Really like they're about politics. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Um Politically charged. He content. he shared he shared the tweet agreeing with it, uh, uh, with the clip agreeing with it. J.K. Rowling tweeted to say that she's fed up with these men with beards, <laughs> um, talking about women women's issues and condoning rape and death threats. Um, now I'm genuinely I've got to read you these because you you need them for the context. It's it's utterly so what, sublime. Can you just re- repeat what she said again for me? I'll go for it. I'm going to go through okay. the tweet. So Billy Bragg shares the clip. This is what he says. Norton, really good here. On John Cleese telling him that cancel culture is just accountability and on J.K. Rowling suggesting that the media talk directly to trans teens and their parents rather than merely amplifying the takes of a celebrity. That's what Billy Bragg said. Okay. Basically just supporting it, right? Just agreeing with it. Did you get, you know, did you get that jump to repeat it? Did you get no, no, it? that bit was fine, yeah. J.K. Rowling responded by, by quote tweeting it saying... Very much enjoying the recent spate of bearded men stepping confidently onto their soapboxes to define what a woman is and throw their support behind rape and death threats to those who dare disagree. You may mock, but it takes real bravery to come out as an Old Testament prophet. Wow. You wouldn't think the two are linked. And then... No, that, I think that was what threw me, because when you first read out what she said... Sounds I was wild. Like, like in my like head she's responding like, to something else, you're like... Yeah, I was like... That was a very extreme reaction, like because you said that the word rape, and I was like, "Wait, wait, what?" Yeah. <laughs> so th- there's 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 another little exchange. Billy Bragg responds again to say, "Hard to think of anything that better illustrates Graham Norton's point than the sight of someone with 13.9 million followers reacting to a call for a fair hearing for trans teens and their parents by equating it to checks notes support and rape for death threats, which yeah. is ridiculous." Like he literally all he said is, "Talk to them, give them a fair fight." Yeah. And she's like, oh, Listen you just supporting stories. you supporting death threats and rape threats. And it's like, well, at what point did I say any of that? Yeah. She then responded to that by saying, hard to think of anything better illustrates misogyny than men complaining that a woman has a view on women's rights. And Billy Bagg <laughs> finally responded by saying, I'm not complaining that you have a view. The thing is, wh- what's doing my head in here and where I don't understand where she's coming from is no one's having a conversation about women's rights. No, and this is the thing. So, so Billy Bragg then says, I'm not complaining that you have a view. I'm just complaining that you conflate my view with support for rape and death threats. I have never expressed such sentiments. And if you had any self-respect, you would apologise for making such a blatantly inflammatory accusation. Now, like you said, the conversation was actually about um, who gets to talk on these issues. Who we should be it wasn't on the issues. To. Who we it should was be who gets to talk to. on the issues, yeah. yeah. 
The thing is, and he wasn't saying women shouldn't talk about them, or it, neither of them were saying women. He was just saying celebrities should maybe hold back on it. Like, there's obviously <clears throat> a conversation ongoing currently, and it's quite a controversial one about shared facilities, and you know, and that obviously affects women's rights because it's might require accommodation on women's part. Some women get and basically, I think what this boils down to. <coughs> is J.K. Rowling doesn't like the idea of having to share a room, a uh, toilet with a transgender female, like because ultimately that's where we're at. Like, like to my knowledge, transgender women aren't like demanding anything ridiculous. They just want to be able to use female facilities, um, and to assume any transgender woman is someone you need to be worried about in the same. Like, I wouldn't have an issue sharing a bathroom with no, a transgender and woman. Day, at the end of the day. Um, talking about like um, it, it's like a guy's for men to just say I'm a woman and then attack someone men do not need to st- pretend to be women to attack women no historically they've just done it yeah okay they've not let anything stop that we don't normally that. make it that complicated no they've never let anything stop that um, they've never had to look for barriers to overcome and it feels like that like if you actually look at what's being asked for at the moment the only thing I see transgender women asking for is that they get to use female facilities that's as far as I've seen it I mean, there's it, obviously going to be more than that they there's just want but again, it's it, it, what it boils down to, and we've gone back to this a few times on a lot of different subjects, it's by giving someone else more, yeah, do you, you think have you less, have yeah. less. And it's just it's, a ju- just it's disappointing that a woman with the imagination she has who created something that millions of people love and they're quite magical to have such a small imagination. It, it's just very funny to me that... In the rest of her life. We, we spoke about it um, quite a while back on the pod and we sort of said, I don't, you know, I don't know if... Well, I sort of I said that I think trans, uh, J.K. Rowling is transphobic, and the the idea was kind I think of I, I agree it looks with you. it looks that way, but you can't be sure. Now, yeah, yeah, it yeah. seems it's in very difficult to yeah. see it as any other no, way. No, I couldn't agree more. All Graham Norton's done has come out and said, maybe instead of speaking to cele- not even speaks, it's like the media instead of speak to the instead of vocalizing celebrities. Yeah, speak to the people that's affecting. Yeah, it's not that hard. No, it's not. And she's been like. Well, well done for supporting death threats and rape threats. It's unhinged. Yeah, we are watching thi- someone have was, a collapse. She wasn't even involved in like the, the, the conversation. Discussion. Like she's almost to a degree sought that out or come across. I it mean, and I thought, guess she sought. I mean, look, like Billy Bragg does mention J.K. Rowling. Okay, in yeah, his support, he literally says on J.K. Rowling that maybe we should talk to. Yeah, I mean, I'll get it up but again. But again, it, that's not the conversation they're having. And the thing is. There's nothing wrong with women being involved in the conversation about the, the co- what's going on at the moment and things like share facilities. You can, of course, have not those said conversations, but that. And again, you need to separate the violent aspect to it. That's something separate because the people that are threatening you actually don't give a shit about the thing they're threatening you over. They're just no, a they're violent just asshole. You. So we need to deal with violent assholes. But that's a s- but yes, that's it's, separate it's, from the discussion. It's very interesting had. that that's what she took away from that. Yeah, I mean, it shows that clearly whatever's going on in her life has got to her. Do you know what I mean? She's clearly paranoid, and because to have that aggressive a reaction in like the imagery she's trying to put and across is quite it's kind sad. of it's watching someone have like a an unhinged breakdown in a yeah, way a bit like watching kanye, kanye i was just gonna say just kanye. As, the difference is it's not because they're celebrities and they're in the public eye they take they're doing it through social media they, they lose kind their of, sense of reality they're coming to us to give us these this yeah, breakdown and, and the thing is at no point and uh, i could be wrong it doesn't seem like this needed to happen. Like because J.K. Rowling could have been transphobic and just kept it to herself. The thing is, in herself. twenty, you know in twenty to twenty-five <laughs> years, J.K. Rowling has been quite not reclusive, but she's been she's been out of the private eye. Yeah, there's I not been ever, there's never ever been any like tabloid stories the or fame that comes with her. And she's handled and that. like look, she's given a lot of money to charity. She's clearly not. But she's handled that quite a well. Completely bad person. But then she she came and started using her platform to talk about this thing. Yeah. And to express these views. We didn't come looking for them. No. She offers them. Yeah. And, and it's the same clear. with Kanye. It's like, he offers these things. We yeah. don't go asking them about him. Like, no one says, Kanye, do you think you're the son of God? Do you know what I mean? He's like, He just says it. He just says, I am the son of God. I am Jesus. I am it. the prophet. Like, it was quite funny. Me and my sister were talking about Kanye today. And she was like, sometimes I wonder, is he like, is he Jesus or is he just a bloke losing his mind? I was like, he's a, he's bloke, a bloke losing, losing his, his mind. mind. <laughs> I was like, no one is ever Jesus. <laughs> no one is ever Jesus. 
Like, especially if they're screaming it from the rooftops. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I you mean, would just find Jesus if there was a Jesus. Do you know what I mean? He would just, just appear. Be yeah, exactly. You like you if you build it. He was a carpenter's son. Do you know what I mean? He isn't on the ground. Do you know what I mean? Calling out Mark Zuckerberg. And I think I think I said to my sister, I was like, what people like get confused with people like Kanye. He's obviously a talented man. He's good at business. He's good at marketing. He's got that system pat. He knows what he's doing. But he is also losing his mind. Like the two of them. Like no. <laughs> but, but yeah. So Yeah, I mean, he started a school. Yeah. Like, what the fuck's that about? Kim yeah. had to hire extra he started security because he, he named the, the private school that his kids <laughs> go to. And she had to hire extra security because she yeah. was worried about attacking And then he kids. went full jail of sex when she started dating Pete David. Yeah, that's brilliant. That brilliant. To be honest, that's where like I don't really engage with it because I actually think it's quite sad. I think and it's that, sad that's no what I think about taking him to one side that really cares about him, that he can trust and go, come on, mate, let's go spend six months somewhere. And that's what I think about J.K. Rowling, particularly with this latest... Yeah, come on, love. Let's, just, on let's go talk like, about this. Do you know what I mean? It's like, giant, put Twitter away. Let's go okay, have a beer. Delete let's, the account. Come away from social media. Yeah. You don't need that shit in your life. Let me Just get step you a back. beer, sit you by the fire. We'll have a chat. We'll have a chill. We'll we'll, we'll talk about it. Do you know what I mean? Because she's clearly got issues with trans women, but yeah. she's making them everyone's issues. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, in that situation, because of the following she has, as we know nowadays, we've got to be conscious of the fact the impact that can. That's why have. we never say anything divisive. <laughs> the thing is, we know the impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I noticed our, <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll, like if if we grow, which we hope we will, like a pie, we will um, we will grow like a pie, like a glorious, magnificent to pie. To be honest, I don't know if I would change. And then we'll self-consume. Yeah, because the thing is, uh, like in that situation, and I've seen it with other podcasts. If you change it, you're no longer what people were enjoying. I don't you think for. the podcast would change. I might. Oh, you'd be so full of yourself. If we became like a self-sustaining podcast that was successful and charting, you would be genuinely... I'd just be really happy all the time. I'd be like, oh, this is my job. Do you know what I'd I mean? be the Kanye. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be, you'd be you'd, Kim K, I'd you'd be Kanye. You'd somehow end up on Joe Rogan instead of me going, I'm the son of God, Joe. I don't know what to tell like, you, listen, I'm listen, the son Joe, of God. People just you'd go full David Icke. People want to listen to what I've got to say, okay? And why wouldn't they, okay? Yeah. When you're as brilliant as I am, when you're as smart as I am, think hey, about it. Me, think about it, okay? Why would you not want to come me, to me? I know. <laughs> okay, the best. I'm the best yeah. podcast. The best. I mean, I already colour coordinate. I'm the best host. Imagine that amplified. I don't even know my co host name. Don't need to. Best no. friend I ever had. I think his name's Billy or something. We still sometimes don't talk. Yeah. Oh, let's <laughs> he just happens to be there when I press record. <laughs> he just keeps turning up. Yeah. Like, think about that. Okay, think how bad my back is, Joe, from yeah. carrying Have that you seen show. that fat fuck? Have you seen Think about it. I'm carrying him for years. Yeah. He gets to make money off of me. He gets 2% and he's happy with it. <laughs> what else you got? I don't <laughs> um, football documentaries. Sure. Uh, what do you think of them? I've not seen many. Have you not? I watched the All or Nothing. Yeah, which one? The f- first one with City. Yeah. And then I watched a bit of the Tottenham one and I was kind of like... I, I didn't watch it I, all the way through. I got through like two or three episodes and I was like, oh, I don't think this all or nothing thing's doing it for me. Yeah, I've watched most of the Arsenal one as well. The one that's on my list is Sunday Until I Die. Have you not watched I it? I haven't watched it. Bro, and everyone I keeps telling me to not watch it. I recommend everyone, it Yeah, everyone keeps telling me to watch it. And it they're doing another matter. season, aren't they? Of course I know. Come on, man. There's so many cringy moments. I've seen a clip There's of them trying to decide the... The stadium music. The stadium music. Oh, mate. And, like, he is so, like... It's like, think we can get people yeah. pumped. And, get, and, and the, like, the, the lad's just like, sat there like, doesn't matter. Like, you know, people are going to make a noise whether they make a noise or not. And he's like, no, yeah. no, no, listen, listen. And he's like, <laughs> and then he was like, doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't like sounds <laughs> top, but he might as well. He might as well. It's that, that cringy. Would have, that would have made it full office, wouldn't it? Full David Brain. Yeah, if, if he'd, he'd have, have done, done it himself, that. he'd be like... <laughs> 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 That's the extra layer that you need. Yeah, like, that would have been good. <laughs> <laughs> good. Bounce with me, vibe with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm into it. Um, that, that, yeah, but if it was scripted, that's the bit you'd add to it. But it was. And there's like, a, a, isn't there a bit where Chris Coleman tries to like duck out of the duck out of the? No, um, he's just leaving the stadium or whatever, and he's like signing shit, taking photos, and this one bloke starts chatting to him, and he starts getting a bit eggy. 
and then he calls Chris Coleman like a dickhead or something. And he's like, fucking dickhead, I've got six kids. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And the I guy will watch like squares it. up to him. It. And it's 100% I will watch worth it. it. There's one person I felt really sorry. I didn't feel sorry for him, but I thought the criticism of him was really, really harsh. It was Jack Rodwell. Right, okay. Because I quite liked when he burst onto the scene. I quite liked yeah, Rodwell. Yeah, but like he just had never his quite career did it. just got cursed, man. Like never he ended up did, at yeah. Sunderland, never won a game there. But like they signed him, I think it was for like between eight or twelve million. From was Man it from City. Everton? No, from no, Man City. City, City course, because he was. went from Everton to City. Of course, it was. And, no, it's uh, City. But he was on like sixty to eighty grand a week, so he was like their highest paid player. Didn't have a relegation clause in his contract yeah so he's still getting played prem money so 80 grand a week in the championship they were trying to get rid of him obviously no one's like gonna take on that action and he still had like and so in the end a year on from that he's still at the club they're now in league <laughs> one and he's still earning like 60 grand a week brilliant and they asked him to tear up the contract and he was like no and he got so much shit and i was like well no, because when Sunderland signed that deal with him, they were they were happy to pay that money. They didn't put relegation release clauses in or anything. Yeah, that's like that. on them. Really, so isn't why it? should he have to give up that money? It's the it's the it's the Barcelona thing with Braithwaite and oh, whoever mate, it was Frankie De Jong. Have you seen what's was. going on with that now? Oh, that's ridiculous. That because they're not going to get ridiculous. through the group stage of the they Champions lose. League, they're fucked. They, basically, they lose a shit. Ton they of money. didn't anticipate that they wouldn't. Uh, can I just say that was a great game between them and Inter Milan? I didn't watch that it, last like ten minutes was just fire. Yeah. End to end, it was like yeah. it could go either it was way. Free all, wasn't it? Yeah, it was like they scored, they scored, they scored, they scored. Yeah. Chance, chance, chance. And I swear to God, if fucking Martinez or whoever it was squared it, yeah, I, I, I was like, oh, oh yeah, he shot or something, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. The the football documentaries, it's. I think that just goes to show to me, it's like we're overloaded with Premier League content. We need to take it down to the lower leagues to kind of get good. Well, Good speaking content. of that, have you seen the Welcome to Wrexham documentary? I've seen the first few episodes. I've started watching it, so I haven't it's actually... It's really good. I've just... Yeah, I think I've, I've, I've been, watched the last one now. I've enjoyed it so far. It. But again, yeah, it, it's like... Man, the Prem's so in your face all the time. It's like, let's, let's drop had, down. Let's I get meant some to screenshot it, but I didn't. But there was a thread on Twitter of this guy who did a dive into some of the numbers of what it's done for them, like the Wrexham oh, documentary. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're... And they've made a few myth out of it. I mean, they're not never won the documentary since... So, their FA Cup ties are now being streamed on like ESPN in yeah, America. Yeah, so up to a hundred million viewers. So there's money on that. There's, m- yeah. you know, they get cut. They get cut money for that. Uh, TV money for that. The the season tickets have gone from like they've tripled two thousand to six thousand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and um, I mean, and their game at the weekend was great. By the way, wasn't what it game? seven two? They played played Barnet. Yeah, what a game. Yeah, I mean, it definitely seems. Is Phil Parkinson still the manager? Uh, oh, I don't know. Pad for a second. I don't know. What I will do, what do you want me to do? Like, do 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 I mean, imagine if I just did that, if we just did like an hour of Sandstorm by Deruda and just back to back to it, still far. Yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone noticed. I think that was a smooth... Smooth transition. I think it looked like you just had the information ready. Yeah. Um, yeah, Sunderland to our die. You have that to is, watch it's it. It's on my it's list. So good. It is on my list. Um, and the thing is, what pe- lot of people don't know is those two guys, Charlie Metham and the, whoever the other one is, are both still shareholders in Sunderland. Are they? Yeah, 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 they still hold like forty percent of the club. Yeah, no, I'm definitely, I'm definitely going to watch it. The, the little clips I've seen and stuff are like, no, that's what I want from a behind the scenes football documentary. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole the all or nothing thing and on the Premier League right, teams it's a bit too glossy in a and way and you get it's it with the Wrexham like one you get to see the town you get to meet the people the volunteers the ground like, do you know what I mean like, there's a really nice bit in it but, on, but like that little way. pub on the corner of the ground yeah, like, like, that's, that's like, like, and they it. seem great the people that run that yeah there's a scene between the groundsman and his apprentice in one of the later episodes but it's it's quite a nice you're like ah oh, that's no, it's nice, and and it's it's interesting in the first episode or whatever, it, or the second episode, where Rob McElhenney is talking about why he chose Wrexham, mm. and talking about coming from Philly, and yeah. talking about how the sports team was more than the sports team. It yeah. was like the whole city. It it's was like embedded if, if into the teams are doing well. The city's up. Yeah. If the teams aren't doing well, the Everyone's city's down, and it's literally yeah. just it's so in tandem. Yeah. 
and it's so kind of symbio- symbiotic that relationship and so he wanted to pick somewhere that had a similar kind of effect yeah. um i mean have I you seen really them nice. appoint phil parkinson in the season yet no okay fair enough oh, i don't want to spoil it then we can always talk we can always do in a do a few questions on it well, yeah we can talk about it later you've watched it because i don't want to spoil any of it the other thing i wanted to talk about with football was have you seen gary neville's revisit to qatar like a follow-up sort of not a documentary but a no but i know i know he's going out there to earn loads of money and be a pundit yes so it, it kind of it kind of undermines any point he makes on it. Yeah, well, the problem was the first one he did, because I've watched both. The first one I watched when he first released The first one it. I watched, I remember, we talked about and it. He was I quite, mean, we didn't talk about it on air, quite, but we talked about it. He was quite critical of them, and I felt it was a fairly balanced, like he was trying to be reasonable. but was He gave them plenty on. of opportunity to respond, and all they responded was their classic lines there. Yeah, but this official time, figures. the first half of it, he was being shown around all their amazing facilities. Tim Cahill apparently runs their football programme out there now. Uh, so him and Gary Neville were wanking each other off for five minutes. Uh, he was wanking them off for how good a job they'd done on some of the facilities, how beautiful it all was. Great, well worth the dead migrants. And then he was he asked to see some of their living faci- facilities again. And then the, he's obviously got people with him that are, like, handling the trips. Yeah, the handlers, right? the official... Yeah, and so, like, one of them... So like, and, sorry, I don't want to be disrespectful, but, like, you know... I no, I think you came across beautifully. I don't think you came across as someone... <laughs> I came across as someone who speaks Arabic. Very, very racially sensitive. Uh, <laughs> Ad Akbar. Very racially sensitive. Um, yeah, might have to stop doing that when we get big. I mean, who's doing it? Yeah. I mean, you're it's the one that's carrying it. It's an it. easy transition for me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so, but, so they, uh, he's allowed to go see this particular facility, and it's not the most disgusting facility. Like It wasn't as bad but as the But you know that's the showing. A grade. That's the one they're willing to like, show. He, that, that's the thing he said afterwards. I was uncomfortable with the fact like they were with us because he was trying to talk to some of the people that were staying there, and the translator was someone who worked... For the state. For the state. And he was like, so I don't even know if they're... Accurately conveying yeah. what was being said. So, um, and he was like, and to be honest with you, I'm not comfortable with those facilities. That's still not good enough. Um, and, like, he interviews a couple of officials and he says to them, like, I'm really uncomfortable. Like, he's not criticising them. He's just like, I'm uncomfortable with some of the living conditions and the way they were sort of trying to get round it. Like, he spoke to one of the hotel managers and he was like, you could afford... He was like, you're running at a... He's like, what profit percentage are you guys running at predicted for the World Cup? And he said, 30%. And he said, well, I'm a hotelier. He said, 30%'s huge. He said, normally you'd be 10 or under. He was like, so you can afford to pay staff more. And he was like, yeah, but we don't set the prices. All of us do. So he was like, I'm, we can't pay them more because then we're losing money and they're not. Yeah, isn't this... Isn't like I said, it's it sounds like and that a great was enough of a justification. But like, sounds like a great message, but then completely undermines it by yeah. going and taking the money to go and. But what annoyed me more about it was he was getting when it got sort of came out that he was going to be representing being sports and getting paid a fair whack to go and do mm. the World Cup. His response to the criticism was to say, "Watch the documentary." And it was like, you've not clarified anything. You've not actually asked anyone to be accountable for anything. You've just said you're uncomfortable with what's going on. So you've not so really you've gone over, over and gone, I don't like this. And, and they've gone, here's a few million quid. And you've gone, well, it's not that bad. It's made me lose respect for him a little bit because on one hand, he goes on stage for Labour and is like, I feel like I have a duty and a responsibility to call out injustice when I see it. But not in this case because I'm getting a fair whack to go. I agree, like there. I said, it completely undermines um, it. But equally, it's, it's very difficult to kind of. Is it fair to expect that of him? Yeah, a better journalists struggle getting round state interviews but with some of those me, Ar- Arabic states. Do, do you know what I mean? I so feel like, like if he hadn't, if he wasn't getting paid by being sports to go, it'd out be there, fine. I wouldn't have an issue with the fact he did the documentary. The it'd way be a he did fine it. documentary. It would add more weight to it. 100%. To a degree, yeah. But it completely wipes it out by yeah. going out there and taking the money. Yeah. At 100%. And like, because I watched something, like a follow-up someone else done, of sort of like talking about it. 
and they said like he's interviewed David Beckham recently when he was asked why he didn't ask David Beckham about the because at that point it hadn't come out that Gary Neville's taken money. But David Beckham had. He's taken over a hundred million to be the face of the Qatar, one of the faces of the Qatari World Cup, and no one's asked David Beckham about it. But to be fair, in that David Beckham wouldn't take an interview unless that's off the table. His te- there's no yeah. way his team allows him to do an interview where that's not off the table. Yeah, but then equally, Gary Neville is a former teammate and friend. Therefore, you can kind yes, of that has probe a bit more. Do you know what it? I mean? You can yeah. kind of... Yeah. Or he, he could argue he doesn't want to upset his mate. Oh, and I think that's the more yeah. likely. Yeah. But I think that's, that's given him an easy escape on it as well. But yeah. so But like, I just feel for me, any other celebrity, I wouldn't say it's necessarily fair to expect them to do it. But considering he claims to be someone who calls out injustice when he sees it to then... Go and take the money. Yeah, it doesn't look good. And as I said, like, look, but I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> lot, prob- it's a lot of money. Like, I've said I'm boycotting this World Cup. I mean, it would be really difficult. Like, if someone said to me, yeah, mate, here's a meal, go cover the World Cup as crossing swords, I'd be like, what do we do, bro? Because <laughs> the thing is, that's life-changing. And then you're like, that, like, what, what do you do? Because my heart says, Your moral say, say no. no but, but my head's like... You, you can't turn down the money. Yeah. So no, I get it. Like I'm, I, I, everyone's a hypocrite in that situation. I think it's like when the tit's that big, everyone gets in line, don't they? I have done. <laughs> if we're talking specifically about tits, yeah, that was my um, your take. Stuff. No, I go for that. Yeah. Um, right. There's not much left on my list. I'd like to say, like I said to you earlier, I did actually have a thing that I wanted to do and talk about, but then it involved me doing like ten minutes of research, and I completely forgot <laughs> to do it. Um, so we've talked about on the again, to like J.K. Rowling, we've talked about this and this person on the podcast before. Alex Jones, little follow up to the Alex oh Jones Jesus. trial. Jesus, um, that was a big um, settlement. So in the trial, he like slagged off the judge, went on his website, put her in flames, then went in the <laughs> fucking court the next day, and they were like, "Did you put on your show? Did you put no. the judge in flames?" He's like, "No," nope. <laughs> and they pulled up the picture, and it was just looked like a kid who'd been caught in his hand in the cookie jar. I mean, it was ridiculous. Anyway, um, the context is that he was on trial for libel because he basically said that Sandy Hook was a, hoax. was a hoax. And then as a result of that, his followers had kind of harassed the parents of the Sandy Hook survivors, yeah. saying that predominantly that they were, because he said, Sandy Hook is not just a hoax, it's a government thing to take your guns. They wanted to, they wanted to do it. It's, it's a, a big tragedy conspiracy. so that they could take away your guns. Yeah. And that all the parents are actors mm. paid by the state. Horrendous. They're already suffering enough. And yeah. these people piled it on. He was ordered this week to pay $965 million dollars to the plaintiffs. I don't know. But this is already after, in August, a judge in Texas, another parent, had sued him separately for this exactly the same thing. Yeah. And they ordered him to pay $49.3 million. So he's now to the tune of over a billion dollars. We also know you don't necessarily actually have to pay that. No. But it, through people do you think like that's Jordan, the right decision. If it, it, I mean, as he's clearly guilty. I'm, not, I've not watched enough of it to know the specifics of the case. Because to be honest with you, I wasn't. Not that I'm not interested. Like it was just, I'm not the biggest fan of his. I find him funny at times with some of the shit he comes out with, but, <clears throat> and I don't necessarily put the blame of people harassing families at his door. I mean, unless there's evidence that he's stoked shit up, which there may be, but again, I don't know. But yeah, ultimately, yes. I think that's a fair punishment, If he's, especially if he's got the money. And he's got another libel case underway. But if he's not got the money, I mean, then it's a bit pointless because he's not going to pay it. He'd have it, to shut he? down, wouldn't he? He'd have to sell off yeah, but every then you single just set up, an asset and set up again. You get another sponsor, you get another backer, someone like that. It's a bit like cockroaches, isn't it? You squash them and... And I think that's why ultimately I'm not about deplatforming because I feel like with someone like Alex Jones, the more he's out in the public sphere, the more we can shine a light. But equally, the you look at Andrew Tate, who we've talked about on the pod before. Yeah. The the number of searches for him... He's the most Googled man on the planet, isn't he? Since he's been deplatformed, it's yeah. dropped to practically zero. Oh, really? Practically no one is talking about him. And this is not just searches, but this is mentions. This is, you know... Yeah, but is that also because these services make it difficult 
for you to find content of his after he's been deplatformed. Do you know what I mean? Uh, possibly, but you can talk about him and you can <coughs> you can mention him. Mm. People aren't mentioning him. People aren't talking mm. about him. He's and think about it. When was the I last time know, you saw anything about him? That feels a bit him? chicken and egg to me, though. If you've deplatformed him, I don't know like where you would find his stuff. Do you know what but I mean? But that's my point. Is I mean, he went on. I watched. He did an interview with Piers Morgan recently, and that was interesting. But my point: he's not found another platform. He's not found a way to carry on his public image. People aren't talking about. No, but him. I don't think we should do that to people. I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying there is an effectiveness to it. Yeah, but I again, I would go back to it's the cockroach charge argument. Someone else will pop up, and then once you get rid of them, someone else will pop up. The, the, and even if you take the other approach and put sunlight on it, and we'll talk about the stupid shit they're coming out with and prove why they're wrong. You can't do that on the today's internet, though, can you? Well, no, there'll always be those who believe it. I, that's what I, I sort of, I think I do believe in deplatforming when what you're, if it's, it's kind of like, but it's a, it's a legal thing. So obviously, the law has no jurisdiction I on the internet. But I think it's a similar thing to the law. You can, it's freedom of speech. You can say whatever you want. But if you're, if what you're saying mm. directly uh, causes, it poses a threat to someone else. For example, he's talking about. The uh, treatment of women and putting them into what would be deemed by all legal senses abusive relationships by saying that that's the way relationships between men and women should be. Some of the stuff he said, I mean, I would recommend... It only has to be some of the stuff. But my point is, if you're saying stuff like that that's directly posing a threat to other people, if people mm. pick up on what you're saying and they go with it and then other people are being the harmed directly as a result, I then I do think you should be deplatformed. I think, I think the that's the consequence. he would make back to you and it's the one he made to Piers Morgan. And like, look, I'd say I'm not necessarily on either side on this because I don't think you should encourage people to commit domestic abuse or anything like that. Is the clips that have gone viral of him are out of context of a conversation far larger where they've taken a clip out of it where he's talking about what in general a lot of society think about women sometimes. Do you know what I mean? Like in general, if you talk about women's promiscuity, we do judge women as a society far harsher than if you're a man and you're promiscuous. I'll tell you now, and it, you're absolutely right, it yeah. could be taken out of context. I've seen part of the clip, I've seen a yeah. part of a clip anyway where he's talked about that thing didn't look that out of context it didn't look like yeah. that's what he was saying was that's how some people say it it looks like he was saying yeah that's how it no, is I that's how think i see it. some nasty shit as well and i think if you what you're but like, like the i said video, if there's a direct harm to someone things can, look, but the point i'm making is things can be misrepresented because for example the first thing i saw about him hitting a woman was that he hit a woman and then you find out from her that it was a sex game and they filmed it they were into beat no and other. that's so like there's do you know what I mean? And it and I've, it is difficult. But there, there's been some kind of vindication. There's been some kind of yeah. Um, but no, I think I don't think he's ever actually come out and said you should be beating women. And in the most recent one, no, with Piers no, Morgan, like said, he it, said as much. Like I said not the I've beating never. of it, but there is some controlling natures aspects of the stuff that he wants to yeah. have in relationship with women. But and I, that I said in a legal sense, if you were prosecuting someone for domestic again, abuse, it wouldn't necessarily have to be physical. No, that's fair. You could, there's a mental aspect to it. But I would, again, I would, like, I don't think he's ever talked about forcing women into that relationship with him. He's very clear. Like, I think he's very clear in the fact he looks for a, a certain type of relationship and a willful woman isn't going to go, like, I say willful quite dismissive, but like a woman who's got more about herself and doesn't want to be know, dominated but equally that's isn't going to go look for a guy like Andrew Tate, is she? But it's still... It's still a, a negative behaviour. It's like me saying... Oh, of course. Look, it's look, I, don't, I don't agree with his no, lifestyle no, I know you don't, or his behaviour. Like, it'd be like me saying, but look, I think I'm... Um, I don't necessarily think his ideals mean he should be banned off of platforms. It's kind of like, oh, I, I, you know, let's go the physical abuse. Like, I beat my partners and it's like, that That seems pretty low, bro. And it's like, no, no, no. I don't, obviously, if they say they don't want to get beaten, then I don't fair, get in a relationship with them. Again, it's like, no, you're still beating them, though. You're still... It's still it, negative. I, I think they they pulled up a clip of him talking about like beating a woman. He said, well, if you play the longer clip, I'm actually talking about if she attacked me with a machete, this is what I would do in response. Do you know yeah, what I mean? No, and look, like I said, like some of it, yeah, from the big company, some of yeah. it absolutely could be taken out. But there are some stuff that I find it very oh, hard no, to believe that was taken I've out of context. I've heard him talking like where it, it, like, you, for me, I, like, as a normal bloke, I watch him and I go, he's being hyperbolic or he's being over the top or he's saying that for effect. It's wrong shit and he shouldn't be saying it. But that that's just how mm. I take it. I accept that there's people out there that we don't want to see that content because 
it's not detrimental to their health or to how they're going to have relationships with women. But we're going to have those men regardless. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't think we shouldn't necessarily be going, oh, well, problem. Oh, no, but problem. I'm not let's saying that that means let's right. promote we've him or encourage him. But I've, I we've just got think to cut him off where we can. And if that means you spend your life cutting off head to snakes, then so be it. Yeah, I just think... Because if the alternative is just I let them run rampant... I agree I with like the that. principle. I don't agree we have the mechanisms in place for me to fully trust a system like that. I think one thing that really is lacking, and it needs to be a, a, a world effort, a global effort, which is why it will never happen. Well, there's too many differences between we need societies to bring, We need to bring a to lot of um, jurisdiction into the online world. There needs to be a lot of legal well, jurisdiction. A problem of what fuels most of social it, media as, we, as we've seen in that uh, documentary, The Social Dilemma, because I think you said you watched it as well, didn't you? It's the algorithm. It's the way the social media it rabbit companies holds you. are... Um, they target it you. It rabbit holes you. Yeah. yeah. So like, I've, I've even noticed on my YouTube today, as I was flicking through it, I'm starting to get weird religious adverts. And they just make me laugh. It was like, are you searching for God or something like are that? You? Was, not really, no, to be honest with you. <laughs> Smart, because you know what? It's like love. It, he always comes when you're not looking for him. Yeah. It's I how think he that's gets, how he gets his kicks. No, I think even for kicks. people who are genuinely religious, I think that's true. I think I, I think most people, like especially when they're like born again Christians, I don't think they ever actually make that decision. Like I think it just happens. Do you know what I mean? Like They happen across a Jehovah's Witness preaching at the local high street, and they're like, yeah, yeah. I get the sentiment. I'm not sure that's ever happened. I think yeah. maybe you yes, you, you put your head down and just I keep walking. I reckon Tom Cruise was just walking past that. What is it called? The Scientology. No, but it, what's it's called the something center, the, like the head office. I can't remember. Oh, the place called. out in the desert. Yeah, it's like in LA or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Where they all I go don't know to do their work. Oh, it's like the psychology center or something like that. It, Whatever it is, but yeah, I reckon he just maybe was walking near it one day. There was someone outside with flyers, and he was just like, "Yeah." There's a bloke standing outside in the middle of a desert, handing out flyers. To no, no, but I don't think it is in the middle of the desert. He's like, "Hey, you're Tom Cruise. You're that guy from that <laughs> hey cocktail Tom. movie." Well, he might have just landed from skydiving. and he does that a lot. He landed. I mean, in I like Tom Cruise. I like Tom Cruise. I don't agree with his views, but I, I like him as an actor. He's a weird guy, though. Oh, very weird. Absolutely, mm. but I like him. But yeah, listen. I don't. That wasn't. I can't remember what we were talking about. Oh, the Alex Jones thing. Yeah, no. Yeah, he deserves to be punished if he's guilty. Yeah, punish him. Yeah, he's used his platform in a dangerous manner. Yeah, if that's what they found him guilty. Yeah, yeah. If they found him guilty of it, then yeah. Fantastic. Anything else? Uh, do you want to do a couple of would you rather's? Shit. None of them are like don't sexual. Worry about None of them your dad my name your dad. <laughs> It was just, I remember your face. I think it's sad you're not up for those sort of conversations. I think they're the best. I'm weird for it, aren't I? Uh, I don't know if I've asked you this one before. Lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? Speak. See, mine's read. Because you can get it through various other forms, right? You can get it through, like, audio books. I feel like, yeah. Whereas, with, like, if you lose your ability to speak, well, the podcast is done. <laughs> I think I'm we, just, we can't just such Morse a code our way through the episodes. You know what I mean? <laughs> did you, bro? <laughs> did you not hear that? <laughs> oh shit! Is that what we were doing? Were, were we secretly saying Patreon.com and then all I'm saying is all of our social some undercover agent code. somewhere has just done some dangerous shit because they got a coded message from us. From now on, instead of like listing out our social name. Should we just start going... And I'll just make it appear on the screen. On okay. game. Should we do that today? We can do. The only problem is for the audio listeners. Because they're... Unless... We'll have to say it. But you can say it like, like you know, at Souls Crossing. <laughs> I'll let you Crossing Swords underscore podcast. I struggle, do do. I struggle with saying it without that, to be honest with you. It's like layers upon layers of difficulty. Yeah. I'll I just like... I like reading. Couldn't give up. I'd, I'd no, I get that. I, if I find a book I like, I enjoy reading, but I don't. I don't feel the compulsion to read often. I haven't read for maybe like, like once a year. I'll be like, I fancy reading the book. I, mean, I haven't read for like a week or so, but that's just because I'm really tired. Yeah, but I do read. Do you feel like fall asleep while you're reading the book? I've never fallen asleep reading the book. I've read a book because the the thing is, sometimes because it's just too thrilling. Sometimes I'll read uh, if I'm really tired. I'll I will read. And I'll get like a page in and be like, I took none of that in. I need to put this book down and go to bed. I reckon we should get, just get rid of books. 
I mean, like, bro, have I'm you, not biting. Have this you is, ever uh, read a good car chase? Do you know what I mean? Um, I've read good action sequences. No, you haven't, though. I mean, I have. You, you haven't, I have. though. Like, I have. if you read, the, I don't know, <laughs> the book version of the film Troy, <laughs> yeah, because sure. that's really famous. Sure. Do you think Huge book. the opening sequence where he does one of like the best kills on screen, like it just wouldn't be the same on page? Oh, it'd be pretty good. It'd be all right, but it's not a, the same. No, he's read a lot of books or a few books. I've read a lot. Right. Dumbledore's cooler in the films than he is in the books. Just because I like. It's been Gamble. a very long time since I've read the books. Well, that's more or your problem than mine, bro. More of a re- like obviously you're not that into books then, are you? You're right. I read things that aren't <laughs> Harry Potter, and it shows that I'm clearly not a reader. No, but what I'm saying is, clearly you don't like books enough to be constantly reading the same books over and over again. So it's not you're the right, same no, as watching right. films. You're right. So films, uh, we should just get rid of books. Do you know what film I thought of earlier? Because I was like, it, it suddenly hit me as if, well, no, I had a part of the song come into my head, and I was like, I remember that film. I did a course at school because of that film. Like how much an impact it had on me at that point in my life. The song came into my head that too fast, too furious, that dum 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 dum. Mm-hmm. And I was like, fuck, I took car mechanics at school just because of that too fast, too furious Did movie. you really? Legit, I took a year of car mechanics. To be honest, that's like one of the worst Fast and Furious songs as well. First of all, it's not get carried like, right here. We know what the best Let's one is. Let's not say slanderous things. We know what the best one is. The best one, I'll it's see one you of again. Two. Well, no, that's not really, Quite that's fun, not, that's not the, the song of the film though. You gonna say Tokyo Drift? Yeah, that or Malabila. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Well, but no, like, if you know, I'm a mini Tokyo. If you I'm just saying, the new, yeah. like too fast if you're ludicrous. It's, it's, it's decent, up, up there. but it's not the best one. But yeah, no, that film. I I watched that film and I was like, I'm gonna do comp. That's what I'm gonna do in my life. And yeah. then I look back at it and I think it's so stupid. They have like twelve gear changes in each sequence. Like he just constantly shifts up. His car must have like eighteen <laughs> gears. <laughs> Like he's constantly upshifting. I don't know what's Look, happening in that film. I don't think the Fast and Furious. I wanted a skyline. I wanted a Nissan Skyline GTR, bro, because of that film. Been famed for their realism. Like I remember Ash in the cinema. I think it's is it Fast Seven when The Rock first comes into it. Ah, oh, five. Is it five when he first comes into is it? Is it the Superman one? Like that? Like he's trying to get back his girlfriend or something, and they crash two cars into each other. They both go flying out the window. Oh, that might of the be car. like six or seven. Oh, that's ridiculous. And he that's catches her ludicrous. And then falls on the car on the other side on the of the car bridge. And she's like, How did you know the car would break your fall? I didn't. I didn't. No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and Ash literally Laugh. audibly in the cinema went, Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I've had similar moments watching films of Ash where we both just laughed out loud at bits. I remember, was it me, you and Ash, we went to see the Green Hornet? With yeah. Seth, yeah, Seth Rogen, Rogen and some Asian guy. Absolutely classy. Um, I don't know who he was. He's the guy from Harold and... Um, I was about to say, imagine if I got it wrong. Is and it I was Harold just like, All Kumar? Asians are the same. It's the guy from Harold him. and Kumar. I don't know if it is, bro. It's been a long time since I've seen the film, but um, I reckon if I remember it correctly, I think it was. Do you want to pad for a second while I find out? You c- Yeah. So um, I just want to clarify that I don't think all people of colour look the same, just well, for I'm legal reasons. my shit if this... What are you going to do if it, if I'm right? And it is the guy. I don't think it is. And you'd have to show me him because I would let... No, it's, like, n- uh, it's not Harold and Kuma. Show me. This is him. Oh, yeah, no, that's not him. No, so you were racist. It's just, yeah, in my mind I had it as him. You just saw an Asian man and thought Harold and Kuma <laughs> get the munchies. Harold <laughs> and Kuma get the munchies. Yeah. Epic yeah. film, by the way. Both it's of good them. film, it's good. Film. George Bush in the second one just gets yeah, me every good. time. It's good. Uh, and Neil Patrick Harris is just... He's like great a, in them. Yeah. Like, yeah. I... I, I st- I think I saw that before I saw Hamming, rather. Like my memory. No, of I saw it long after. I can't remember, but my memory. I feel like my memory of Neil Patrick Harris was that. Then Hamming, your mother, and no, then my, the Doogie Howser stuff. My, I've never watched Doogie Howser. Nor have I, but I've, I'm aware of it. Yeah, my, no. My first introduction to him was Hamming, your mother. Yeah, it probably was. The timing um, of it was like 2005 ish. So yeah, it probably was. Harold and Kumar. I don't think came out until like the year after. But right. yeah. Oh, did you hear about NASA flexing the other day? Bro, I had it. In my, I was literally going to end by saying, "Yeah, big up to NASA for for going full Armageddon <laughs> slash um, what's the Don't other one? Deep close Impact. My eyes. You know, full sci-fi. 
Yeah. Just fucking launch a missile at an asteroid. Just flex Pop it shit away. Off. Yeah. Just like, boom, we thrusted at an asteroid. And they're sort of, I mean, it always goes back to one of my absolute favourite quotes in, like, any sci-fi thing ever. But it kind of, they're like, you know, why do you do it? Like, because we can. <laughs> And it kind of got like it's it's one of the best quotes. Well, actually, if you think about it, there's quite a few people out there that say the likelihood of us being wiped out again one day by an asteroid, it, like it's not out of the realms of possibility. No. So, like having a plan in place and knowing you can, we'll probably be busy that day anyway. I won't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, we'll record a pod. We're both very day. busy. Yeah. Do you know what we? I will won't as be well. with my loved ones. No, we will as well, and we'll talk <laughs> about how great life on Earth is. Yeah, and then things have finally got better. Literally, the day the episode drops, Bro, Earth ends. We've got our first brand deal or something. Do you know what I mean? Bang! Uh, it's yeah. just we do this thing where whenever we talk about something, between talking about it and recording, Everything and sometimes I swear to God, we record on the same day that we release. Right. And it changes. There's a chance the day we release this, Liz Truss gets removed as Prime Minister. Do you know what I mean? It's why I didn't want to do a political <laughs> thing, because I was like, so much is fucking changing, and I cannot yeah. handle being that wrong again. No, it's hard. It does make you question yourself. A lot. And I question myself enough as it yeah. is. I just sort of stand naked in front of a mirror sometimes and think, oh, why? I don't, I don't do that. I ain't got a mirror large enough. <laughs> just because of my cock, more than anything else. So big, though. Like <laughs> I honestly don't know how... You, I mean... The, it's amazing that when we walk, I can't see it moving. I mean, I have it strapped. You've got to. I mean, you can't walk around the with that The risk of swinging when I uh, turn d- quickly is just not worth the risk. It's just, well, do you remember, you, there was that period before you strapped. You don't know how, like, four people. Yeah. And I live with cats. It's just too dangerous. Yeah. The last thing you need is that they'll just climb all over yeah. it like it's some so kind like, of, like, post. It's annoying it has to go down one and back up and down the other, but, you know, it's what it Wraps is. Wraps well, though. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a it's bendable, good for the winter. I wrap thing. it around my neck. Keep it warm. Oh, yeah. Have you seen the... Oh, I swear someone in uh, some kind of thing has an has a elasticate cock. Oh, it's in uh, The Boys. <laughs> I haven't watched it for a while. I'm just pretty sure The Boys, someone has a... An elastic dick. Like an elongated penis, yeah, that they can just grow out. Nice. Um, freaky. Anyway, Jay, tell people um, know where they can find us. Yeah, <coughs> I'm just thinking about your own crossing. Crossing. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> do crossing the swords on school <laughs> podcast <laughs> on <laughs> <their> Instagram. <laughs> do, 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 do. Crossing swords <laughs> on the Facebook. Crossing swords one nine at gmail dot com. Do, 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 do. Those are all the places. That is a disgrace. <laughs> First of all, I don't, I'm gonna, I don't mind being insulted by a lot of people, but I will but not be not stabbed off trust. by this trust. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> and what a way to end it. Uh, forgive me. Forgive me. That was sort of like me with my notes earlier. Forgive me. Have you ever been to Peppa Pig World? I haven't. <laughs> it's a wonderful, wonderful piece of British enterprise. I don't think I've got that on here now. No, you wouldn't. No, it's gone. Shame on you. I think it's gone. Yeah, get stuffed. I can give you that. Get stuffed. Does that help? What What was weird? What was funny is that just before you played the clip, you just kind of, you just kind of went. I'd said, I mean, I hadn't even said have you got this clip, but it was like I said have you got this clip, and you kind of went through and went, oh, get stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> Mama like that. Mama like that. I just look Jake deep in the eyes as I paid that, and I think that's about as much sexual tension as we can take for one day. I can't carry on. There's too much blood flowing from my brain no, into got, my penis. I've got to get the episode edited and uploaded, so we will uh, see you guys next week. Bye, guys. Bye.